And that's the reason why I don't want people to not see it over the phone. You see what I'm saying? Let me tell you, this is not in our, in our, in our PowerPoint presentation, but let me tell you what makes an effective presentation. Okay, you know how you are when you start and you present the business to people and then they don't join or they don't uh, get involved with the business and you're angry? Right? I mean, it's human nature. Oh, man, what an idiot. Can't he see what this is? <laughs> you get angry. You get fired up. But let me tell you, I've gotten to the point where when I present the business to someone, whether one-on-one -on -one or in a crowd, and for some reason the guy doesn't see the business and walks away, I actually feel sorry for the guy. How many are like that? I mean, I have the feeling in my heart, man, if this guy could only see what I'm seeing, it would change the way his family lives. I mean, how many people will agree with me that an extra $400, $800 a month will change the way people live? They may not make 10000 a week or 20000 a week or 30000 a week, but $400 a month? I think anybody can do that. $800 a month, that's just two steps. Won't it change the way people live? I mean, it won't buy their hotels, it won't buy jet planes and yachts. But it'll pay gas bills, food bills, doctor's bills. That's how I feel about our business. Like, when he walks away, I'm like, wow, if only he could see what I see. And many, many times, I will go see that person again, simply out of compassion. I mean, God, you, you need this. Once you have that in your heart, then you become very effective with the way you present now that I can't teach you. That nobody can teach you. I have seen some people with really slick presentations. Oh man, they're pros. But there's no heart. When you present the business to someone, you present it with him in mind, not you. Not you. You're going to make money. You're going to make money. Remember, this is a get rich, sure scheme. We all agree. You're going to make money. Sooner or later, if you do this business day in, day out, consistently, with patience, improving as you go along, you will make money. That's, not, that's a given. So when you present the business to someone, you present it with his heart, his family, his finances in mind, not yours. Because yours will come. You just have to be patient. Once you have that in your heart, you will become effective. Because be, I'm sure you have seen many slick presenters of many businesses that you don't you know, feel comfortable with. Because all, you're seeing dollar signs in the guy's eyes when he presents. <laughs> if you start getting to the point, and it'll come. Maybe some of you don't have it yet. Maybe you think we're being too idealistic. But for those of those, I'm sure the guys on the V-Team, Ronnie, Tony, Ranjit, I'm sure, Isa, where's Patman? Patman, Anan, I'm sure, I'm sure we all have that now. When people walk away, right, right Ranjit, Ronnie? Isn't it? Wow, they don't know what they're missing. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that has to come from you, and it will come. You will see, once you start enjoying the benefits of this business, you're going to want everybody to enjoy the same thing. Really. If you had a cure for AIDS, wouldn't you shout it out from every rooftop? Yes. Wouldn't you get on every TV station, every radio station? Wouldn't you contact every to tell them about this cure? Have AIDS. Acquired income deficiency syndrome. <laughs> and you have the cure. You just sit down with someone and say, hey man, with a little elbow grease, a little effort, a little training, it doesn't have to be that way. You choose the school. You choose the vacation spots that you and your family go to. It doesn't have to be this way. This is the cure. Once you feel that way about our business, then you're going to be really good at presenting it. Even if you make 10 mistakes when you present. Because no matter what you say, people connect. People connect with your spirit. People connect with your heart. Anyway, that wasn't in the PowerPoint, so just please take the, the notes. Before you make a presentation, you dress comfortably. 
Yeah, when you go to make a presentation, you must dress comfortably. Now, when I say comfortably, okay, in a style of attire where both of you will feel comfortable, okay, you don't have to come in a three-piece suit, you know, in a, uh, you know, the, the national dress of the country that you, that you represent, you know. <laughs> there are times where you will have to. When I, <laughs> I was with this company once, and my dad's going to laugh about this. <laughs> I used to present the business in, you know, shorts, rubber shoes, you know, the Michael Jordan four or five or six, okay, whatever, <laughs> whatever the fact was at that time, and you know, a Chicago Bulls T-shirt, okay, and I, and my hair used to be this long, <laughs> and uh, and it wasn't a wig, it was my hair, <laughs> and I do my presentations dressed this way. I talk to people, and I uh, I do my trainings like this. Because what I wanted to project to people was, hey, you don't have to dress like this to make money in the business. That, that's, I've learned since then <laughs> that it helps if you, <laughs> that if you dress up. But that's, and, and you know what? I had so many people coming up to me, bankers, lawyers, you know, finance guys, coming up to me saying, man, I wish I could go to work dressed like that. And that's and it's freedom. That's what I was trying to project. I have freedom. I can make money. I can feed my family. And I will only wear a suit when I want. Not because a boss tells me to wear. You see, I'm trying to say freedom. So that's what I'm saying. Dress in an attire where you're comfortable with that will give the impression that, hey, I'm an independent businessman. Right? I mean, if, if the guy says, hey, I'm going to be at the poolside you know, for two hours. Why don't you just come over and show me your business? You don't come dressed like this. You know what I'm saying? You dress up in, you know, Bermuda shorts, a t-shirt, sit down, show him the business or discuss with him. But on the other hand, if the guy is meeting you at the Shangri-La lobby and if I'm coming out of a convention and, you know, the guy is dressed go up in Bermuda shorts, rubber shoes and, and t-shirt, because that guy is going to feel uncomfortable. See, so that's why I'm saying dress comfortably. I didn't say dress properly because there is no proper dress code. It really depends who you're going to meet, where you're going to meet him. You have to speak clearly. When you do this business, make sure you get your message across. And one way to do that is speaking clearly. Okay? You don't want to go up to someone, Hey, you know what, Harun? This business is so great. And you know why? Because man, when you do 5-5, five -five, you get a cycle and this thing in. You don't want to talk like that to someone. <laughs> Not too fast. <laughs> Some people are saying, hey, that's how I present. <laughs> and at the same time, you don't want to say, Harun, you know, here, five, five, four hundred. You don't want to treat the guy like an idiot. <laughs> you don't want to go up to him and say, Harun, call the question. You don't want to be so shy, so soft, nobody can. But you don't want, hold on, you know what? This is right, this bit. You don't want to completely blow him away with the volume of your voice. You know what I'm saying? Cool. You have to be cool. You have to, you know, hold on, you know, in this business, it's really good. You know, speaks. At the right pace, not too soft, not too loud, not too fast, not too slow. Practice it. Practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay? If you're really, really serious about this, you want to be a You might want to go or they sell these tapes. And, you know, they have these sizes. You know, no, I'm serious. Because it helps. Especially if you're going to be presenting a lot. It helps to, to breathe properly because then you can make more. Do you ever have those days where you presented so much and you come, Hi, Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm oh, Japan. So you're from Goldcrest. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in the business? Just two days. <laughs> it helps. It helps if you breathe properly, you know, because also your voice sounds more pleasant. And it also, it also makes a difference, uh, you know, that, I mean, no matter how good the business is, if the guy, you know, Henry Bonkrat, we would like to show you, you know what I'm saying? If your voice sounds like a 
catfish. I mean, the guy's not, the guy's not gonna want to listen to you, no matter how, well, no matter how well you present the business. He's okay, okay. I'll buy a set. Just shut up. <laughs> it helps, you know, if your voice is nice to listen to. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not trying to make opera singers out of everybody here, but it helps. Just get some tapes, you know, breathing exercise. It helps a lot. Okay, it helps a lot to speak clearly. Okay, correct volume, correct pace. Okay, as you speak, not too fast, not too slow. On some points, you might want to go a little bit faster. On some points, you might want to go a little bit slower. You know, just just for the uh, just for the effect. Okay. Another thing is you must be relaxed. When you present the business to someone, you have to be very, very relaxed. Okay. In order to be relaxed, you should have practiced on your own. Right? Don't pick up a manual or don't come from a, a, on, come from a how to present seminar and then immediately go out <laughs> and, and hope that you can present the business to people. I know I've done that. <laughs> the first company I ever, ever joined Okay, I sat through the seminar, I'm going to do this, it was an MLM company, I signed up as a distributor, I came from the seminar, I went straight to my friend's house and attempted to present the business to her. Took five hours. <laughs> we were screaming at each other, you know, and she was teaching me, no, no, this plan says this, no, it's this. <laughs> of course she didn't sign up. <laughs> To this day, she's never joined me <laughs> in any of my uh, ventures. But I'm trying to say, don't do that. Practice first. Practice. The next day, I presented it to another friend. This time, it was only three hours long. <laughs> then the next day, I'm sorry, I'm, this, is, this is my actual first four days in the industry. The next day, it was only two hours long. The next day, it was only one hour. And this time, I had an outline. I had notes. Uh, but see, the thing is, I wasted my practice on three of my friends. <laughs> practice on your own in the room. Just, you know, some people, then, you know. I know a lady who practices with the cat. Because, because the cat doesn't object. It's, it's, it, builds, it builds her confidence. I mean, whatever makes your boat float, okay? I mean, it builds her confidence, so for her, it's good. Do not <laughs> Do not attempt to make a business presentation the day after you hear about it. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Imagine the scenario. You hear a beautiful song today that you like so much. The song has a beautiful melody, great lyrics. The, sing, the song hits you right, right the, hit, the song hits the right spot in your heart. Now, would you be able to sing the same song tomorrow? I mean, well. <laughs> and yet, that's what many, many people try to do. <laughs> that's what many, many people try to do. They hear the business once, and they think they're experts. Oh yeah, I've taken my notes. They come back one week later, this business doesn't work. You're never going to be able to explain it the next day. If you guys know this, make sure you pass this down to the new people in your organization. Okay, make sure you pass this down. Remember I was saying this last night. When somebody first comes in and joins this business, tell them, don't talk to anyone about it yet. Don't even mention the word Gold Quest. Really. Don't say anything. If you want to talk to your cousin or your brother or your friend, let me go with you. That is so important. Many, many people kill off their best prospects simply because they turn them off because they don't know how to explain it properly. Make, make sure you tell people, number one rule, shut up. You want to open your mouth, I come with you. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. The more you've practiced, the more confident and relaxed you will be. The more, and the, the more relaxed and confident you are, the more effective your presentation will be. 
You have to be relaxed. You have to be relaxed. Do you, you ever watch a singer who's nervous? Aren't you also like, <laughs> you're nervous for him. Correct? I know, I've been in both situations. <laughs> Do you ever listen to a singer who's cracking all over the place? It's like you don't want to hear it. You pretend that he's not, because you're embarrassed for him. <laughs> right? It's the same thing is going to happen. If you're tense, you know, the guy is going to get really tense. He's not going to be relax. Just relax. And the only way you're going to do that is practice. Practice in your room. I practice in the car a lot. I mean, I don't have to practice now. Like I said, I know it like the back of my hand. Another thing you must practice is our objections. Don't wait <laughs> to hear an objection for the first time from the person you're presenting the business to. Come up with objections yourself and practice answering them. If you don't know the answer, go up to your leader. If he doesn't know the answer, bop him on the head. <laughs> I don't know any other way to say it. If you have an organization under you, it is your responsibility to know the answer so that you can teach them. If he doesn't know, bop him on the head and go to his leader. If his leader doesn't know, bop him on the head too. <laughs> but practice, practice the objections. Okay, answering objections will determine many, many times whether a person's gonna join you or not. Okay, so practice, and the more you practice, the more relaxed you're gonna be. One point to seriously consider is don't wait until you get to a point where you won't make mistakes. See, many, many people are not relaxed because they, they, they're afraid to make mistakes. I mean, nobody likes to make mistakes. I don't like to make mistakes. Makes mistakes. I just made one. <laughs> you see, I'm relaxed. I feel stupid, but I'm relaxed. <laughs> nobody likes to make mistakes. Nobody likes to make mistakes. Okay? But at the same time, don't be afraid of them. Okay, the more you practice, the less chance you have of making a mistake. However, that does not guarantee that you won't make mistakes. Don't wait for the time where you think you can give a perfect presentation with no mistakes. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I still make mistakes when I present. Ronnie, I'm sure, still makes, makes mistakes. Tony, Ranjit, we all make mistakes. But see, the thing is, the person that you're presenting to, Okay, does he know what you're going to say next? So how does he know if you've made a mistake? You guys know if I'm gonna, what I'm going to say next. I don't know what I'm going to say next. Because <laughs> I have a black screen. If you make a mistake, okay, just say, oops, I'm sorry, I forgot. That. How many have ever heard me make a presentation? How many in this room? About two or three. Which is good, actually. Which means I've taught others how to present. Sati, how many times have you seen me during a training or a presentation say, oh yeah, I forgot to say, those are mistakes. Those are mistakes. Just relax. Okay, the person that you're talking to has never heard the plan before. He doesn't know if you're making a mistake. Just relax. If you make a mistake, say, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you earlier that the, the steps go this way. And then you continue and pick up where you left off. Just relax when you make a mistake. I've been in many, you know, productions and stage plays where, you know, we're all there, we're <laughs> making mistakes with the dialogue. Sometimes we're making it up as we go on the director screaming on the side. <laughs> We've missed all our blocking, missed all our lines. And then at the end, the audience is clapping. We're like, oh, wow, if they only knew. People are coming up, Joe, what a great play. Oh, what a... Yeah, yeah. That one royal. <laughs> when I was singing before with the band, I used to, I used to sing and, and you know you practice a song the night before, okay, and then it's on the next day. And many many times you forget the lyrics, and you can't have lyrics with you. And many many times you know we, wow, we forget the whole song, so we make up lyrics on the way. You know, yeah, the sky was blue this morning, and. <laughs> Or sometimes you can't come up with lyrics and people go, wow, ad lib. Wow, improvise. 
But deep inside, yeah, we just forgot our lyrics. People come up and say, Joe, great song, where'd you learn that? Yeah. <laughs> really, as long as you don't let it on that you're making mistakes, just, nobody will know. Just relax, okay? Make it seem like a, you know, a casual thing and go back and then uh, explain the mistake and then proceed. Be confident with the fact that what you're presenting, that person needs. Okay, everybody needs financial freedom. Everybody needs it. Some people won't admit it, but they need it. <laughs> everybody would like to have an extra one or two thousand dollars a month, correct? <laughs> that's the compassion, that's the heart that I'm talking about. Once you're more concerned about his needs as opposed to yours, then you become very, very good at, pre excuse me, at presenting the business. Finally, speak with enthusiasm and conviction. Okay. <laughs> many, many times your conviction, your excitement will be what turns the tide. I mean, can you imagine going up to someone, yeah, come on, Jason, this business is, well, I don't know, you, uh, I think it'll work sometimes, I think, I don't know, but you, you want to give it a try? <laughs> But if you stand behind the project, Jason, look at this. I know it's new to you, but I believe in it. I don't know about you, but I'm going to make my millions in this business. What, you want to try? Let's do it. I'll do it with you together. Many, many times it's your conviction, okay, that gives other people courage. Remember I was saying part of being a leader is inspiring? You have to inspire people, okay, to take steps that normally they wouldn't take. That's what leadership is. Okay, it's not going with the flow. It's not going with the crowd. Anybody can do that. Anybody can sit there and say, Jason, I think you're nuts. You're never going to make 20 grand a week or 30. I don't even think you're going to do one step a week. It takes no courage to do that. It takes courage, though, to look somebody in the face and say, I've been, you know, in this rut for 10 years. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm burned out. I'm looking for something new. I think I have found it. Now, you want to take the plunge with me? Last night, we were supposed to show a film clip of Braveheart. How many have seen the movie Braveheart? I have not seen it. Oh, you got to see that movie. You got to see that movie. That's going to be a classic. Okay, it's about the, the, the war between Scotland and, and, and England, the war for independence. It speaks about their hero, William Wallace, played by Mel Gibson. Huh? Yeah, a lot of similarities with me, right? <laughs> Hair, two eyes. But it's a fantastic movie. Really, it's, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. About courage, about leadership, leadership by example. But anyway, there's one scene there. I mean, this film was made at the time, uh, not at the time, about the time, okay, when the English Empire was one of the most powerful uh, empires in the world. Okay, their armies numbered hundreds of thousands and millions. And there was one particular scene where the Scots were fighting for freedom, okay, where these guys, you know, the, the, the Scots, they're farmers. These guys are farmers. They had their, their, uh, their uh, stones and pickaxes and their thighs. You know, you know those things that they... I could never pronounce that. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. Okay, that, that thing that goes like that, and okay. So here they are, and they're all, they're all ready to fight. Okay, there's thousands of them forming a line. I mean, those are the days when war was really war. Okay, which is another thing we saw in Gladiator. Okay, another good movie. Okay, but anyway, we'll talk about that later in another seminar. But anyway, so all these guys are all ready, and you know, they're dirty, they, you know, they, they have their thighs and their stones. Okay, and then you hear this rumbling. And over the hill, okay, the director always does this, over the hill. Okay, you never see them, okay. All of a sudden, magically, 50,000 troops appear, okay, and they're rumbling, and all of a sudden, these guys are like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem to be such a good idea. They were outnumbered, I don't know, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, I don't remember, but they were greatly outnumbered. Okay, they were out equipped. These guys had the best, you know, these guys weren't farmers. These were professional soldiers, you know, with swords, 
longbows, spears, horses. I mean, they had everything it took to totally annihilate the enemy. Okay, and these guys, all they had were their eyes. Okay, and their stones. So anyway, these guys were like, whoa, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's nicer to plant potatoes, okay, which is, which is basically what they wanted to do. You know, some guy in the crowd says, hey, you know, we don't really have to do this, why don't we go home, and you know. So they were actually turning back, they were walking away and going home. We wanted to show you this clip last night, but we couldn't get it to work. So I'm trying to narrate the whole thing today. But anyway, this Willem Wallace comes out on a horse gray on one side, blue on another, you know, long hair, had a sword here, no thighs for him, you know, he had, he had the proper sword. And he starts marching up and down, talking about freedom, ah, barking, ah. And he said something to the effect that, yes, you can go home, okay, but you're not going to die a free man. I'd rather die fighting for my freedom. Something to that effect. But his battle cry was freedom. And as he, and anyway, bottom line, when he said charge, everybody charged with him. I mean, it's a magnificent scene. My hair is standing as I, as, as I talk about it. It's magnificent. And see, the thing was, he was the first one who led the charge. He wasn't going, come on, freedom. Now you go, I'm going to watch you guys from this hill. No, he was the first one. And everybody charged. And as outnumbered as they were, I couldn't believe it. They beat the army. They beat the English army. It was absolutely magnificent. But anyway, what I'm trying to say here is the courage of that one man, okay, inspired the others to do what otherwise they would not have done. They would have rather gone home and planted their potatoes with their eyes. See? But they went and fought. And they won. They beat these guys. Now I remember one line, okay, and this is very, very important as you make a presentation and, and do this business on a global basis. Where the Scottish prince, okay, uh, you know, the one who the English was trying to take his kingdom away, he was the heir to the throne. And uh, he told Mel Gibson, Mr. Willem, Willem Wallace, he says, how do you do it? I have the rank, I have the title, you know, I have nobility, I have the blue blood, but people don't follow me. And you're, you're a farmer, and people follow you. And he looked at him, and he said, as long as you talk about freedom, people will follow. And you must remember that. As long as you speak freedom to a person, there will always be people willing to follow you. Because many, many people are looking for freedom. In our particular scenario, it's financial freedom. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that money and then having lots of it is a solution to all your problems. Okay, that's, that's not how we are. All I'm trying to say here is when you have the proper finances, there's a certain aspect of your life where you don't have to worry about it anymore. I mean, let's face it. If you read the uh, statistics on divorce, I think 85 or 80% of all divorces uh, are, are crying because of financial troubles. But the husband and wife can't do It's sad to see a marriage break apart simply because of financial pressures. So there is a certain kind of freedom bearing, that, you know, a freedom bearing stance that we must take. We represent something. It's not just money. Money can't buy happiness, but it sure helps. <laughs> Those who say money can't buy happiness are not shopping in the right malls. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> My mom used to tell me when the tough, when the going gets tough, the tough goes shopping. No, no, I was, I was just kidding. <laughs> anyway, speak with enthusiasm and conviction. Many, many times, it's your spirit, it's your heart, it's your conviction, it's your excitement, it's your enthusiasm. That's going to take, you know, this guy's heart that has basically accepted his fate, so to speak, in life and say, hey, maybe I don't have to be this way. I actually can have a chance at financial freedom. You have to somehow communicate this with your eyes. And you're not going to be able to communicate it if you don't feel it in here. In fact, 
If you are convinced in your heart that this, that this is an opportunity that can benefit everyone concerned, then you show it when you present the business. You show it. Some people show it with their eyes. Some people show it excited, they spit in the guy's face. I, I frankly prefer the first one. <laughs> Many people fail in their presentation because they're not convinced about the feasibility of the business themselves. You know what I'm saying? They come in, you know, oh, well, uh, maybe it'll work. Maybe, you know, maybe it won't. But you want to give it a try? In fact, their thought is, if I can get people to join me, then I believe it can work. Then I will believe it can work. Right? Let me try it first. Before I actually go out and purchase a coin and make an application for my TCO, I'm going to see first if other people will join me. How many were like that in the beginning? Some people almost raised their hand and they dropped it. <laughs> you must believe first before you can make others believe. You have to believe in the business first. Then others will believe you. That's why the smart ones, quote unquote, who says, aha, I'll wait first before I have my five on the left and five on the right, and then I will purchase my coin. You guys are all stupid purchasing your coin first. I'll get my five and five first, then I'll make a purchase. Sounds smart, right? It sounds like, you know, a logical thing to do. Can you imagine a restaurant owner or a businessman going around the city Asking the residents to sign a petition that says, if you all promise to eat in my restaurant, then I'll open one. <laughs> we all find it really funny, but that's exactly what that guy is saying. If you guys will, you know, promise and sign here on a legally binding document to eat in my restaurant, then I'll open one. Would you sign a petition like that? Would you eat in a restaurant that opened up because of that petition? <laughs> No. You put up the restaurant first. When you're confident of your menu, the chef, the service, the value for money, then you put up your restaurant, then people will come. In other words, you believe first. Then people will come to your restaurant. Can you imagine having somebody present the business to you? Jason, I think this is great. You shouldn't miss out on this. Blah, blah, blah. What about you, Joe? Are you in already? Actually, I'm not. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> but I, there are many, many people out there who are trying to do this. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. People are not going to join you if you don't have any convictions about what you're doing. Be prepared for objections. That's also another thing. Be prepared for them. Don't, 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 uh, don't be taken by surprise. Practice answering objections. It's your ability to answer objections that will ultimately bring down the walls of negativity and skepticism and open people's minds to participate in our business. Many of you out here were extremely skeptical first. I know. I was. But it's because somebody sat down and explained to me, then I said, hey, this is real. This is real. So be prepared. Very important. When answering objections, do not be apologetic. Actually, it should be, when answering objections and presenting the business, do not be apologetic. A mistake that many, many people make is that they're so apologetic when they present the business. No, you have to be confident and firm, but not arrogant. <laughs> you can't be arrogant. You can't sit here and say, don't you understand? Ow! <laughs> no, be sure of yourself. What an idiot this job. Uh, Let me loosen your tie. Then maybe blood will flow to your brain and you will understand what a serious business is. is. <laughs> I said be confident and firm, not arrogant. There's a, it's a fine line sometimes. It's a very fine line. You have, to, you have to know how to find the balance. Okay? Don't be apologetic about the business. I'm not ashamed of this business. Are you guys? I happen to think it's the best plan on the planet. You show it. Don't be apologetic. Don't apologize. Because I've seen people. I've seen people come up and, you know, uh, Jason, I'm sorry to take up your time, but can I, you know, can I please present you with the business? Is it good? I really don't know. Can you help me figure out if it's good? 
No, you come up. Jason, I want to talk to you about something. What's it about? It's about this business. It's really good. I think it's the best thing that ever happened in my life. I just want to show it to you. What's it about? Never mind. Let's sit down. You know, uh, that's exactly why I want to make an appointment. I want to sit down and show it to you. This is so good. You're not going to want to miss this out. Be confident. Be firm. Because from your confidence, the person derives confidence. One of the biggest mistakes people make is, is, uh, is that they're apologetic. Okay. Especially, sometimes they're confident and firm when presenting the business, and then the moment somebody asks an objection, hmm, they become shrinking violets. <laughs> Be prepared for objections. It is the customer's right to ask questions. Do not get angry. One thing though, when you're answering questions, when you're answering objections, before you start, okay, you have to be discerning, okay, and, and, and say, is this person asking objections because he really wants to know more about the business? Or does he just want to be a pain in the neck? Because there are just some people like that. No matter how many times you answer, how many objections, they're never going to be satisfied. So you have to be discerning. Sometimes people have come up to me and said, Joe, how come with this person, after five minutes, you just got up and walked away, but this guy's answering the end two hours you've spent with him. And I said, because this guy, I can see, he really wants to know more about the business. This guy just wants to tell me about my business. Okay, so be prepared. Be discerning. Don't waste your time. Remember, time is your capital. Don't get into an argument with a guy who probably will never see the business uh, profitability anyway. But we have to be discerning about it. If you're apologetic and take a defensive stance, people are going to notice it. Okay, people are going to notice. That fire from my eyes is going to be gone. Okay, take the stance and show that you're not ashamed of this business because I'm not ashamed of it. Okay, I'm proud of what I'm doing. I happen to think what I'm doing is, or what we're doing is contributing to society. Okay, in, 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 in a very big way. Okay, so you show it. When you, when you present the business, when you answer objections, you show it. Okay, take a stance like a soldier on this thing. If you're ashamed of being a quester and participating in this gold quest opportunity, then you don't belong here. Okay, now when I say that, what I'm talking about is you have no right to talk to somebody about a business that you don't believe in. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to speak the truth. If you're sitting here talking to a business, uh, talking to someone about this business that you don't believe in, you're nothing but a, but a, but a swindler or but a con man. Really. You must believe. Before you make others believe, you have to believe in this business first. And people will follow that. If you're proud and convinced that you're doing a good thing, then you show it with your eyes and your heart. Not with your spit. Okay? With your eyes and heart. Control yourself. Okay, because I know, I know how excited one can get. I mean, I remember my first few days in this business, I could not sleep. Literally, I could not sleep. Before, before we started this, in this business, uh, I never used to drink coffee. Okay, if you have dinner in my house and somebody asks for coffee, we have to send the driver out to, <laughs> to get coffee because my wife and I, neither of us drink coffee. I mean, that was before. We couldn't even buy coffee because, you know, by the time we got to this much, it would be hard already. That's why we were so happy when these sachets came out. Oh yeah, of course my brother wins just when he hears sachets. He's a, he's a percolator guy. Okay. But anyway, I could not sleep. Literally, I could not sleep. Okay, and that's when I started drinking coffee because I couldn't sleep at night. And then during the day, <laughs> I needed to be awake, but I was so sleepy because I didn't sleep the night before. So I know what it's like to be so excited, okay, that it's hard to control yourself. <laughs> But I guess maybe that's also why people saw the business, because they saw I saw it. Like my cousin, she told me, Joe, I don't know too much about this business, I don't know too much about this company, but I can see you're really excited about it. If you believe in it, then I believe in it too. And that's why she came in. Same thing with Ferdy and same thing with a lot of other people. Thank you. When you're presenting the business, have a time frame and an outline. Okay, don't just keep firing from the hip. Okay, have a time frame and an outline. For example, one I find a good one to follow is five minutes for the company. Okay, you don't want to talk for two hours about the company. Five to ten minutes on the product. Ten minutes on the compensation plan. Okay, the basics of the plan. 
and then uh, 20 minutes on the feasibility, the business feasibility plan. Don't just show, you know, the circles and the steps and the cycles. You have to show how it works. And then finally, 10 minutes on closing. Closing is very, very important. Okay, spend five minutes discussing the salient points on the company. Okay, the board of directors, uh, the location of the different offices worldwide. Okay, because you know the offices show a, a commitment, you know, to, to the people in that country. Uh, Gold Coast performance over the last one and a half years. You know, I was very touched by what Ronnie uh, said uh, and and Muhammad Isa. This company has performed. Okay, I mean, it's, we've never let anybody down. You talk about that. Okay, you know why? Because many, many times, they say, oh, this company is new. Has this company performed? Eh. Amway had to be one year old. You know what I'm saying? New Skin was one year old uh, sometime in their past. Okay, Gold Quest has to be given a chance, and we have performed. Okay? Associations with the different organizations worldwide. And I'm talking about organizations that are taken seriously by a lot of people, like the RAM, the Royal Australian Mint. We are one of their official brokers. Okay, there's only 23 worldwide. Okay, the Perth Mint, the Mayor Mint. Okay, we have a joint venture with the Mayor Mint. Now the now now uh, the company Goldquest, we can now mint our own coins. Okay, which is very, very, a lot of organizations are now coming to us. We will be announcing it on the web and, and on our bulletin boards, you know, uh, because they want us to mint their coins and market it for them. It's very exciting. It's a very, very exciting program. Okay, and these are companies to be taken seriously worldwide. And these companies would not associate, you know, with a company that's fly by night or, you know, has no future. Okay, they see the future of this company. They see the integrity of the board of directors. They see the integrity of our performance. Okay, so spend five minutes discussing about this. Spend five minutes showing brochures about our products. Okay. Now, one very important thing. When, when you show brochures, okay, don't come out with brochures this thick. Okay, just the basics about the coin. You know, it's gold, it's round, okay, it's valuable. All right, let's not, you can do that later. Okay, you don't want to get, the reason I'm talking about five minutes here, five minutes there, Okay, it's because again, you want the guys to see not just the product, but also the business. Okay, and let's face it, the business plan takes a little bit longer to discuss <laughs> than the gold coin. Okay, so don't, don't spend two hours on the, on the coin. Explain the numismatic value of the products. Spend 10 minutes showing the basics of the plan. Okay, after, and then put away the brochures. This is one thing that most people forget to do. Put away the brochures. Can I say it one more time? Put away the brochures. Can you guys say it with me? Put away the brochures. You know why? You know why? I don't know why, no. <laughs> because you don't want that as you're showing the plan, they're reading. You see what I'm saying? For the same reason that I'm clicking one at a time. Because what I don't want is I'm discussing one point and you guys are, because it's human nature. It's human nature. If you're there trying to show them the plan and they have all these brochures, they're going to be looking at the brochures. Just take them away and say, we'll look more into this a little bit later. I'll give you a few copies if you want. You can get all of this downloaded from the web. But let's focus in on the business plan. Okay, so take away the brochures because they're never going to concentrate. At this point, no income projection. Don't talk about how much money this, how much. You just show the basics of the plan. What is a TC? What's a tracking center? What's it there for? If you don't know, then you should be bopped on the head. Okay? <laughs> the difference between an indirect and a uh, direct referral. Okay? You should, you should uh, show them. Okay? Important. Point out that there's no time frame from competing steps and cycles. Okay? Of course, this is after showing them what the steps and cycles mean. <laughs> You point out to them that there's no time frame for this, okay? Because it's very, very important. That it makes it so viable that you know you can have five on the left and zero on your right, and still you know take two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months, and you still qualify for your steps. Then you explain the max out, the flushing. Okay, explain all the aspects of the business. When all the basics are clear, now you can go to the business feasibility plan. This is very important. Okay, that's why if you notice on the minutes, uh, I spent most time on this. 
The business feasibility is so important because this, this is when people decide if they want to participate in our program or to just buy a coin. Okay, remember, yes, we are a retailer of very, retailer of very fine gold products. Okay, in fact, we, oh yeah, I forgot to announce, we just opened our store in Hong Kong. You know, our retail store uh, in Hong Kong. And, uh, you know, we'll probably be putting one up also in Canada and maybe in Italy. Okay, two members of our V team right now are in Italy and Greece. Okay, so in other words, we are a retailer of fine gold products, but at the same time, we offer an opportunity to the people, to our customers who participate with us. Okay, so the f business feasibility plan is very, very important. Okay, how many here decided to come into the business and to participate in the business when they saw the feasibility of this business? That's how important this part is. Okay. Now, one feasibility plan that works well is the 10-stage business plan. Okay, different stages. Okay, because it could happen in a month, it could happen in a day, it could happen in two months. Okay, it's up to the person to decide the time frame. So you decide it in stages. Stage one, they purchase a coin. Of course, everything starts with the purchase of a coin. Okay, even with MasterCard and, and Visa card, you know, and the member get member, you have to be a card holder to be able to refer people into that company. It's the same thing with GoldQuest. You have to be a customer in order to refer people. Okay, so the first stage purchases a coin. The next stage, they refer two persons. Okay, we find that for the projection or for the business plan, two people work well because everybody knows two people who like gold and want to develop more income. Yes or no? Everybody knows two. You may not know 100, you may not know 200, but two people, everybody can deal with. Okay, in other words, you want the business feasibility plan to, speak, to be exactly that, a feasibility plan. You want to show a plan that's conservative. Okay, not, oh, if you refer 200 people in your first hour, okay, <laughs> and everybody does the same thing. No, it's just something very conservative and something where, well, as you're explaining it, it's like, hey, I can do that. That's the kind of plan you want to show, or feasibility plan you want to show. Then, after referring to two people, you train and caddy the two people, okay? And I want this very, very clear in the feasibility plan, because you want them to know that there is work involved, okay? That it's not something where you will make money without having to put in any kind of work. There is work involved. And then you encourage them to do the same thing. These two people, they will also purchase a coin. They will also bring in two people, train and caddy these two people, and then duplicate. And then the whole process goes in. That's one stage. So you go to the next stage, and you go to the next stage. And you will see the numbers uh, will add up, and you will see that this is something that's feasible, even by most conservative standards. In other words, no matter how aggressively or, conserva or conservatively you present this plan, people will see that it is something that they can make money with if they participate in the proper way. Okay, so that's why the business plan is very, very important. And again, you want to make the projection so clear, okay, and so conservative that the guy will see himself in it. Okay, you don't want to be saying, if I do this, this is how much I make. When I did this, this is how much I make. No, no, no. When you do this, you refer to people and you train them, this is the benefit you get. When you train them and they refer in, you qualify for that. What's in it for him? Not, you know, if you come in today with you two people, I qualify for my coin tomorrow. <laughs> Even if you don't say it, it's going to show. So before you go into a presentation, check your motives. In any potential business, whether banking, the restaurant industry, garage, farming, a prospective entrepreneur will check the feasibility of the venture before he decides to involve himself. That's how important the feasibility plan is. When you talk to some, see, if you, if you want to talk to somebody about investing, let's say, in a bakery, let's say you have this secret recipe, you know, that your grandmother has passed down to you and that was passed down to her, and you went to a potential investor, would you sit there and blabber about this wonderful bread and the smell will bring people in for miles and this? Is that what you talk to your, to your financial partner? No. What do you talk to them about? How much? Right? Where? 
how can it happen and how will it happen the feasibility ROI right then and only then then you can talk to them and say by the way this is the bread and this is you know why we're gonna sell so you see what I'm trying to say first you talk about the feasibility of the plan when you are talking to someone about business you treat that person like an investor not I mean is the investment here the coin no, that's just purchasing of a coin. What I'm talking about is investment of time. You have to somehow convey to that person. Because that person will be asking, why should I invest my time in this venture? That's what I mean. Treat him like an investor. But his capital is not money, it's time. Because it takes time to build this business. Okay, so you address that need of the person or persons that you're presenting to. Your feasibility plan, this is very important should not be based on hype shouldn't be based on hype it should be based on the simplicity the duplication process and the excellence of the plan the feasibility can everybody do it is this something that everybody can do you don't have to be you know one of these massive leaders worldwide to succeed in this business that's very very important okay show the feasibility and then finally you get to the closing okay this is important because this is what seals everything okay give your own testimony about how you became how you came to be involved with gold quest you know oh, this was presented by my cousin i was skeptical at first but then i came in when i saw how well my cousin give some testimonies give your own you know, ever since I joined this business, all of a sudden, you know, paying the bills, you know, which used to be such a burden before, now all of a sudden, we don't have bills anymore. I mean, we, we do, but they're paid on time, and you know, etc., etc. Give your testimony. Well, how has this business changed your life? If you just started out, of course, you won't have a testimony. <laughs> okay, I just started yesterday, Jason. However, I'm really excited because start giving the testimonies of your leaders and their leaders. You know, my friend, he's just been in this business for two months. And man, he's, he's, he's already achieved financial freedom because now he can actually go out and bring his children out to the theater. Or whatever, whatever it is you like to do. Give somebody else's testimony. Okay, don't just end with the, with the projection, that's it. Talk about what Gold Quest has done for your life, at least from the financial point of view. That's where you can connect with someone. Because like I said earlier, we're all the same. All of us have the same wants, the same desires, you know, the same goals, the same desires for our families and our children. All of us are the same. Whether you're talking to a Malaysian, a Singaporean, an American, a Canadian, we're all the same. So as you talk about your dreams and how Gold Quest is answering, the needs of these dreams he will identify yeah i would like that also yes i would like to also he's not saying this but he's thinking this in his mind so very important the testimony part get copies of checks and genealogies does this company work yes look up look up my leader you know he's been in this uh for six months and after his first month he was earning here's a copy of all his checks this by the way is a copy of my first check i just earned it last week tell stories Tell stories about the business. Tell stories about yourself. And then finally you end with the financial freedom that you hope to achieve okay, with your endeavor with Gold Quest. Because ultimately that's what it's about. It's about financial freedom. Okay, that's, really what we're, that's really what we're trying to show the person. Finance, everybody quests for it. Everybody looks for it. Everybody desires it. Okay? So you close with that. And then, of course, uh, you open answer objections. Okay, you just sit down with him and answer his objections. Okay, now, uh, one thing before we close is make sure you teach people how to present. One, okay, this is not on the, uh, this is not on the uh, CD-ROM, but uh, just take notes on this. One way that I teach people how to present Okay, because remember, it's very, very important that you teach. Okay, so when I bring somebody in, okay, I will tell him, I will present to as many people as you want me to, provided that you are there with me. I explained why uh, yesterday. One, okay, because that guy's not going to trust me unless 
let's say Jason uh, introduced me to this friend. He's not going to trust me unless Jason is there. And what better way to learn than Jason, you know, seeing me doing this thing? After about two, three times of doing this, okay, after two, three times of uh, of, of uh, accompanying, uh, of having him accompany you as you do your presentation, you do what I call half half. Okay, Jason, you do half. You do the company and the products. Okay, I'll do the business plan and the projection and the business feasibility plan. Okay, now the reason, oh, well, I've never done, no, you go ahead. Anyway, if you make a mistake, I'll be there with you. Okay, very important. Just give him half of it first, and since you're there, he'll derive confidence from that. He'll know that if he makes a mistake, okay, that you're going to be there to, to help him out. Okay, now, after about two or three times of doing this, okay, you go to what I call the other half, okay? You now say, okay, because now you're talking to more and more groups. In fact, these are probably not Jason's directs anymore, okay? These are already his indirects. And you, you go to him and you say, now we do the other half. I'll do the company and the products. You do now the business. Oh, but that's complicated. Never mind, I'm there. If you make a mistake, just look over in my direction and I'll help you out. It's very important that you're there with him the few times that, that uh, the first few times that he does it. Okay? Now, this is the exciting part. <laughs> and you do this also two or three times. Once you can see that he's done it pretty well, okay? The next, uh, by this time, you, you should have had a pretty big group growing already. You presented it to about six, seven, eight, nine people or small groups of people with him present. So now these people are inviting others. The organization's starting to grow. Okay, so now they'll say, oh, can you talk to this? Can you talk to this? Now you tell Jason, Jason, look, instead of us going to them one by one, invite them to your house. You know, invite the five or six or the seven to your house. Okay. Okay, it's Tuesday afternoon, 5 o'clock. So you set the time. Make sure everybody's going to come on Tuesday, 5 o'clock. You know, the, the thing I talked about, coffee, cake, that kind of thing. And then, at Tuesday, 5 o'clock, you call Jason, okay, and say, Jason, uh, something came up. I won't be able to make it. Of course, Jason's like, what? What do you mean? You know, they're here. <laughs> Don't tell him this the day before, okay, because then he just cancels. Okay, wait until everybody's there, okay, because now he's committed, he's forced to go. <laughs> he's committed, the people are there, he has no choice. But at the same time, he's already gone over a few times with you. Okay, now don't tell them that you're doing this, this is just a secret between us. <laughs> don't tell them that you're going to do this. And you'll see, this guy's going to be, you know, calling your mother all sorts of names, Okay, oh, what do you, but you know, blah, blah, blah. come on, okay, I'll try and make it there, but I'll be, you just start, blah, 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 blah. hi, you know, here in Gold Quest. He has no choice, they're there. And you'll see, tomorrow morning he comes up, wow, what happened? You know, Joe, you're such a bum, you know what you did to me, yeah, but what happened? Hey, you know, two out of the five, they signed up, hey, it was pretty good, it went pretty, you see, I'm trying to say, but unless you do that, most people will never take the leap on their own. Most people will never take the leap on their own. Okay, and, and very clear, you have to do it in that order. <laughs> okay, don't do the last one, number one. Don't send an appointment for 10 people and then don't show up and he's never done a presentation in his life. <laughs> Joe, help. It has to be in that order. Okay, let him derive some confidence first, doing half of this, half of that, and then he's ready to vent. And then you'll see, after that, he'll start scheduling it on his own, because he's already, uh, he's already, uh, what do you call this, done it on his own. Okay, so that's very important in how to teach. And then, then he'll start teaching others and teaching others, and pretty soon, you're going to have 500 on your left and 500 on your right, all who know how to present. Okay? So that's the value of making an effective presentation. Make sure you master it, do it well so that you can reproduce it, and that's your first step in building a global organization. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being so patient. And uh, 
Thank you.